I'm two weeks into an epic three-week journey, passing through some of the richest marine life areas in British and Irish waters. First of all, the Celtic explorer, I've joined a world-class team of marine biologists and oceanographers as they use cutting-edge technology to assess the abundance and distribution of life within our oceans. Along the way, my mission is to find and film marine life that would normally be far out of reach. And we're watching probably seven or eight Rissos dolphins. The main objective of the survey is to assess the abundance of fish, such as herring, boarfish and horse mackerel. But assessing all levels of the marine ecosystem is hugely important. And starting at the bottom involves some rather unique equipment. The high-speed gulf sampler is a remotely operated device that incorporates an incredibly fine net to catch plankton. Basically, this high-speed gulf sampler is towed off the back of the boat and Really, it's a plankton net inside of a steel torpedo. I'm actually manually controlling the gulf sampler right now. You're fishing for plankton. That is, uh, that's the main, the main game uh, of the high-speed gulf sampler. Small things matter. They play such a huge part in the marine ecosystem on a global scale. A vital step in the food chain, zooplankton consists of tiny animals like crustaceans, fish larvae and jellyfish. Aidan, that is sea soup. It's hooching with invertebrates. Absolutely full with zooplankton, yeah. And uh, these, these zooplankton are the base of the marine food chain. They feed our fish and our fish feed are larger whales and sharks and dolphins. But the only way to truly appreciate these ecosystem energy providers is through the microscope. That is absolutely beautiful. What is it? Well, this is called a sea gooseberry. It's slightly different from other jellyfish because of these lines of cilii that move together in unison to help the comb jelly move in the water. But it's only when you look through the microscope you realise they're miniature works of art. Absolutely, and this complexity and diversity you see in zooplankton in general is something that is overlooked a lot of the time. And if you take zooplankton out of the picture, you have nothing else. You don't get your fish, you don't get any higher organisms that we love and hold dear. Plankton feed krill, which in turn feed baleen whales, which are exactly what I'm hoping to see. And after a few choppy days with no sightings, the weather is looking good for spotting. We've just come round the butt of Lewis, so we're in the area called the Minches, in between the Outer Hebrides and North Scotland, an area that's brilliant for whales and dolphins, and conditions, I have to say, are perfect. And it's not long before there it is. Oh, I saw the snout. Oh, beautiful. We spot minke whales. Minke whales can grow up to 10 metres in length and weigh in at nine tonnes. That's twice as heavy as an elephant. It's really close to the boat. Like all filter feeding whales, it has two blowholes to maximise the oxygen needed to support its huge body. Personality-wise, it's a really introverted whale and incredibly difficult to get on film. Despite being one of the smallest filter-feeding whales, minkies can still consume a staggering 300 kilograms of food a day. Finding the minky whales is an incredible experience, but I'll have to go even deeper if I want to find the real giants. 